It's only one. I kind of want to see. Whoa! Oh, there's the other ah, one. I screamed. Dang it. In today's video, we're taking the things you wanted to see deep fried and throwing them into our deep fryer. Guys, we have our lovely patch of bare dirt here because we are doing some fun experiments with a deep fryer and we don't want to have that splash all over like it has some other times. We've maybe left a couple oil stains on some concrete. Even when we've put down tarps in the past, when we've had things react very explosively, well, hot oil is going to burn through a plastic tarp. So this seems like a better area to do that. Yeah. Here's the basic idea. We found five comments of five different things that you guys want to see deep fried. We're gonna try them out and let you know how it goes. We've looked through comments and found five things that you guys have requested for us to deep fry. And we're gonna try all five of those and see what they do. I think we've got some pretty fun ideas here. Yep, yeah, you guys seem very, very interested in what can and cannot be deep fried. So we've done two of these in the past. You'll notice we have a third deep fryer. We've gone through three deep fryers now because we keep breaking things because the things we've deep fried explode. I don't know if anything we have today is as explosive, but I am kind of curious to see what happens to it. So yeah. let's get started. Should be interesting. Um, first off, we had a, a video, we, we deep fried eggs in a few different ways, but one thing we didn't do was to deep fry a hard boiled egg. So these are hard boiled eggs, and I think we're gonna try deep frying one with the shell on and one with the shell off and see how they react. I like it. That's hissing. Already hissing. I'm pretty sure the unpeeled egg is going to pop fairly quickly. Or crack. It might just crack. Woo! You called it. <laughs> and I jumped about seven feet. Not all of the shell came off, but one part of it did. I think that's probably the, the uh, air the pocket. Air pocket, yeah. Or even the yolk in the inside. How could Although be. that might have been too fast for the yolk to really start heating up. <laughs> that happened after like 10, 15 seconds. Maybe, yeah. The okay. peeled one has gotten this lovely golden fried egg coating. Has crust. And we've definitely started losing shell off of our unpeeled. Hey, that's a good way to peel a hard boiled egg. Yeah. Deep fry it. Actually, I want to try again. Like leave these going, but I do want to do this with another one. And as soon as it pops, I want to take it out and see how much of the shell can come off. Okay. And let's back up a little farther because that almost threw oil at us. That doesn't look cracked yet at all. So that's strange, one of them popped so quickly and then this other one has been in there for much longer and it hasn't. Let's maybe take these ones out and look at them and then we can fry up the other two if we want. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and say, just uh, as far as presentation is concerned, doesn't look all that appetizing. A new, new way to fry an egg. This one's kind of interesting, the one that was in the shell, because it's still browned but it didn't get the same crackly crust. And we didn't batter these guys. You saw them go in as it was. Still soft boiled even. Wow, but look at that. You have this crunchy. This could be a thing. I think one of the comments I saw asking about this suggested that it was actually a thing, like a, a Scotch, meal. Scotch eggs. Is that what it's called? I've seen them before when I've gone to Britain, but yeah, battered egg and then it's fried, battered. I believe. Tell me if I've got this wrong. Really good, but it kind of what this reminds me of here. Hot? Mm-hmm. Is the crunch texture on the outside nice or is it just meh? No, I actually really like it. It reminds me of just a very fried egg, but I really like that crunchy texture that you get, like the edges around the edge of the pan. That's not bad. I would actually do that on purpose. I would peel it first, but yeah. I like that crunchy and you, you're getting a nice even coating on the outside, whereas mm -hmm. the one that had the shell on, there are, there are parts of it that were more protected that I don't think picked up that texture as much. You can see mm -hmm. right there, this still had shell, it didn't come off. And then this one, none of the shell came off. So we have inconsistent results and none of this is fried on the inside. <laughs> Maybe the one that popped is the rare one. Might be. I've only been there about 30 seconds. Whoa, there we go. It's only one, I kinda wanna see. Whoa! Oh, there's the other ah, one. I scream, dang it! <laughs> one of these days, guys, you're going to see us film an explosion where I don't scream. Someday, someday it will happen. Pop. All right, so we had one egg that did not want to pop but three eggs with a shell on that did. But overall, I think if you're gonna fry a hard boiled egg or a soft boiled egg, it probably is best to peel it first because then you get like 
a soft boiled egg with a nice crunchy outside texture. And it's actually delicious. Eggs. Interesting. What's next? Eggs. Well, you know, there's one breakfast food. Next up, people wanted to see a different breakfast food. We've got oh, no. Pop-Tarts. Pop-Tarts can be cooked in a number of ways. Toasters, microwaves. It doesn't have deep frying instructions, though. We're gonna have to make it up. Yeah. One, one, two, three. three. That looks like a soggy Pop-Tart. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna just say that. But it, it also looks a lot more cooked. Put that one next to it. You can already see the difference in color there a little bit. Or it's just oil soaked into it. Ugh, that is a soggy Pop-Tart. I say let's put it in until they look nice and crisped up on the outside. I don't know what time we're going for, but just by a visual. Well, that one already, I mean, they, they come pre-looking good to me. That's the other weird thing, guys. I don't care for toasted Pop-Tarts. I don't want warm Pop-Tarts. I just eat them directly out of the package. I like toasted Pop-Tarts. <laughs> I don't microwave them though, I use the toaster. I don't own a toaster. They're floating like donuts. These look like soggy Pop-Tarts. They do. That looks like it's gonna have so, so, so much oil in it. Oh, it's gonna squish. We're gonna try and eat it and it's gonna squish. All right, let's pour them out. It's soft, but it's also still hot. That seemed about the same texture as an unfried Pop-Tart. Let's let these cool down quite a bit. They're still very hot to the touch and then we can try them. What are we trying next? Mentos. I'm going in order of what we think is least likely to destroy our brand new deep fryer to most likely to destroy our brand new deep fryer. Just drop it. Goodbye, Mentos. <laughs> um. Well, immediately there is no reaction. <laughs> Give it some time and see if that changes. I'm gonna just Maybe toss a couple in a more in. Oh, it split open. Split open. Oh, it oh. dumped its guts out. I think the shell just came separate. Let's pull that out. Yeah, that was interesting. It did, it dumped it, out its I guts. Think it, dumped its guts out. We just have the Mentos shell left. What? All right, let's see if all of them pop their guts out or if that was just a weird thing that one of them did. And they don't do anything for the first like 30 seconds or so. Yeah, it takes some time. That spot that's bubbling, that's where the goop was. Oh, here they go. Breaking open. Check that out. <laughs> They've all just dropped their shells right off. That's bizarre. Okay, I'm gonna regret this, but this is a piece of a Mentos shell. Very warm. Minty crunchy fry oil. It is very crunchy. I think the shells always are, but you don't really notice the crunch as much as the there's soft a, stuff. Normally there's a goo behind it that absorbs it all, but now all the goo was extracted. But the crunch part is my favorite, so that's a funny way to get that. All right, it's very warm goo, but I'm gonna eat it anyway. Shocker. Honestly, I think the mint is more powerful like this. It really is. I don't know what about it is making it more powerful, but like, it's just almost an overwhelming amount of like mint vapor. And it might also, just be heating it up. Check out how the shell bubbled. And you can see it just spit out their insides, but the shell is now bumpy. Here's the Pop-Tart we cut in half. It's, it's like a fried flaky pastry hmm. outside of a Pop-Tart. It's kind of what you'd expect. It does absorb a lot of oil. Like you bite into it and okay. it's, okay. it's like straight fry bread. Oil is a major component and flavor. Uh, deep frying, yeah, it's a valid option. The inside, the filling definitely does get warm. Uh, we've left it sitting for a bit and it's cooled down, but it's still very warm, so it would probably be way too hot when you first took it out, like most things when you deep fry them. <laughs> um, and when you toast them, the filling can be too hot. So if you like that kind of thing, I'd say a very valid option. You can deep fry a Pop-Tart. Personally, I would stick to toasting them in a toaster. Callie would stick to not cooking them at all. But they're good. In order of things least likely to destroy are deep fryer to most likely to destroy our deep fryer. The next up, I swore to never do a video with gum ever, ever again. We've got three different types of bubble gum here, and I think we're going to try, well, all of them, we're gonna see what happens to them. Just opening this pack of gum, I was struck by a wave of strong scent. So this could be some pretty intense gum. This is just bazooka bubble gum, pretty standard classic old brand, I think. Although this has two flavors in it, and I think it used to only come with one, so times are changing. I think it's gonna melt right into that. It might. 
It really, really might. That is a blue raspberry something nightmare. Oh no. Mm. I don't know if we are, oh. Uh, maybe in a minute we can try scraping it off that paper towel there. Maybe let's just try cooking the piece for not quite so long. All right. It's about to fall apart. I think that's good. Yep. It looks like a tongue. Let's try our other couple types of bubble gum. We've got a ball and some bubble tape. Yep. This I think actually will explode. It's gonna, yeah, we're gonna back up for that one. It's gonna pop. Oh, I just saw bubble riding out of it. Yeah. Oh. The bubble tape oh, is fantastic. Oh no! That's disintegrated. And gone. I did not know that gum would come apart in oil. Most of it is just white. The little bit that was near the top. Kind of looks like one of the eggs now. Yeah, it does. Oh, it just sinks now. <laughs> and you got too much oil in it. You try gum. I'm not very good at making bubbles, apparently. Or it's not very good bubble gum. Good gum. I'm just gonna drop my piece of bubble gum in and see what happens. Uh, to it. I hate this. Hot oil reacts to water kind of violently. What you're listening to, says and Pop, there is Nate spit. It's also completely disintegrated. What in it's the world? It's just gone. Wait, okay, my piece. All right, so different, bubble gum. And, and different type. This is the bubble tape. Yep. Giant chunk of it. Gross, I think mine's stuck to the bottom. Yeah, I had a little more momentum getting in. Oh, the oil's gone murky. Yes. That's disgusting. I don't think we're going to be eating anything else out of the oil at this point though, That's so fair. it's a good time. Yeah, so now if you were to fry something in that oil, it would be spit and bubble gum coated. Yeah, yeah, just what you want. I think uh, you should probably do that as a prep before you cook a turkey in here. All right, I wanna try some of our deep fried bubble gum. Do you? A little. Okay. It actually does have that kind of classic fried texture where you just, it's crispy and light as you bite through it. Oh my goodness. I'm trying to just chew it and see what happens. I think it uh, dissolved a lot of the gum part and a lot of the sugar has been left behind. How are you feeling about that choice? It's really not very cohesive at all. It's like not holding itself together. It's almost like a slime. Prove it. Oh, you missed, you missed! Yeah, it's really squishy and disgusting. So would you recommend somebody deep fries their bubble gum? Definitely not. There's no advantage to deep frying bubble gum. I know a lot of you are planning to go out and do that, but don't. Maybe not. Glow sticks. Glow sticks. We want to see what happens if we deep fry a glow stick. A sealed glow stick mm -hmm. and a cracked glow stick. Absolutely. And then we probably need to crack a glow stick, cut it open, and pour the glowing fluid into the oil. Sure. Assuming oh. that we can do that without just exploding everywhere. However, I am worried about them exploding, so we are going to be moving a fair distance away. Well, in addition to that, because I want to see if it activates the glow, we're gonna move our whole fryer into a darker location so we can really see that. Yay, allowed destruction in three, two, one. I wanna know if they're gonna expand, but I'm not willing to stand close enough to see. Right, I hear bubbling. And uh, one of them, it looks like there's movement. Something's floating a little bit up near the top. I think the plastic has opened. It could still have the glass cylinders inside sealed, or cylinder singular. Well, there is another experiment I want to try. Like yeah. I said, I want to activate a glow stick, then cut the top off, and see what happens if I just pour the liquid directly into the fryer. Whoa, okay, it That turns looks very cool. cool. Oh, that's so pretty. So, it's kind of like when we poured it onto the stove top. Yeah. It goes very bright, and then Teal. kind of burns out. Guys, that's it for today. You let us know if you want to see anything else in our deep fryer. And remember, that's not all. We've always got more for you to see. Hit that box up at the top to see our most recent video, and we'll talk to you in the next one. See you then.